Hey guys, this is a video about the Iris Plus once again and today I'm going to test out the return home function uh, RTL and also the, the uh, emergency landing in other words, land wherever it is, wherever it's situated it's just going to land at that point um, for this um, we got two switches on our radio and uh, I want to talk about the cases for the iris. You know, you guys, I don't, who wants to spend 200 bucks on a case for an iris? I don't. So I went to Harbor Freight, 25 bucks with the 20% discount. Harbor Freight has this uh, case and uh, it has foam so you can make all the compartments for your radio, your batteries, your chargers and everything. It all fits nice in here. I'm going to show you a close-up of this. That way I can just carry my iris in one hand and my case in the other. And I have everything I need, even my tools that I need. If out in the field, I, if I ever need tools for something, I have. So here's a close-up of that case. There you have it. As you can see right here, I have uh, my charger. Uh, the AC connector and all that. I got some black tape right here. I have in the back, I have the power supply for my charger. This is a uh, power supply for my my action cam, my radio. And uh, over here, I got a second charger. You know, under there, I have my batteries. Here, I'm going to show them to you. I got three batteries right there and I just put an extra cushion on them and under the foam that you see here which protects everything here I also have all the tools that I need as you can see I have the screwdrivers and pliers that I need I have some extra props, I have uh, the Allen wrenches and whatever I need for this I have, so it's all there. I'm flying with the Iris, the uh, Taro 2 Axis Gimbal and my Vivitar camera. The Vivitar camera is a DVR 794HD and it works pretty darn good. Except uh, I'm getting the uh, GoPro 4 Black. Because I want to do slow motion in 2.7K and so I'm getting that this week. For all the flyers out there that want to do it the proper way, here, this is what you guys are actually required to have. You should put your name and your cell phone on your iris, then your FAA registration okay which you get a number that in, the AMA includes uh, I'm covered for uh, injuries and uh, you know someone gets hurt even theft if I someone steals my iris in my car I'm covered so look up remote control airplane AMA then go to the FAA and uh, request a re register your drone and put your personal information in case the drone gets lost or whatnot. Okay, once again, today I'm going to be testing the uh, RTL return to launch from 300 feet up and out a ways. And I'm also going to do the uh, uh, landing right on the wherever it is, emergency landing. I'm going to do both, so here we go. Okay, this is going to be my RTL position, my home position, and I'm going to take off from there, go out a little bit, you know, further, f further straight ahead of another 50 feet, and then go up 300 feet. Then I'm going to push the home button, and hopefully it'll land around the same spot. Okay, that's going to be the first test. So let me get uh, the camera going and. Everything going here. Okay, I got satellite. And my gimbal's working. 
So, okay, I won't be able to to shoot and fly at the same time. So, once I'm at 300 feet, uh, the the camera's pointed there, so we'll have a general idea. So here we go. Okay, I'm gonna go out of ways. Somewhere around here. Okay, now I'm just gonna climb and climb. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's pretty high. All right, so now I'm just gonna push return to home. Here it goes. I just clicked it and it just came forward. And as you can see, hands off. I'll, I'll try to get the, uh, the drone there. Like, it's hard to see. Have to back up a little bit here. Here it is. It looks like uh, it's coming down. Oh, hold on. Wow, look at that. I think that's pretty darn impressive. 300 feet high, a ways about 50 feet. And it landed this way perfectly. It's short one foot this way, maybe two feet. But I think that's a pretty good uh, test. Okay, now I'm gonna go with the uh, emergency landing which is the top button over here. Okay, flick this, it's gonna land exactly where it, it's at. So we're gonna go up a couple hundred feet and do the same. And I'm just gonna go up right from there. Here we go. Fifty feet and up and up and up. All right, I'm just gonna hit the switch. And here we go. I hate holding this tripod because if something goes wrong, I need to take control of the radio. So I'm gonna reposition that there. But so far, so good.
Here it is. And <laughs> I mean, what better? I mean, you can't ask for any better than that. Um, another thing I want to test out is I want to show you guys when I use my my left and right okay when I'm in loiter mode it's not as responsive because it's held uh, 180 degrees horizontally by the GPS so therefore when I go the other way it doesn't re respond as fast because it, it tries to uh, stay as level as possible Oh, I just want to show you the difference between in loiter mode and when you do it in manual mode. Manual mode is a lot faster and a lot more responsive. So I'm going to show that to you. I won't go far up just so you can see here. Okay, right now I'm going to go in loiter, loiter mode. Okay, I'm just going to go up five, six feet. You see the response time is very slow because the GPS tries to keep the, uh, the drone horizontal at all times, at all costs, you see, very slow. Now watch the difference when I put it in manual mode. I'm going into standard mode, here we go, now watch the difference, look at that, see that? A lot, lot quicker. Oh, it's got to be at least two times, three times faster. Much, much quicker. All right, well, that's it for this test. See you guys later.